Samsung has done it! After years of hard work and iteration, they have released the Galaxy Tab S3 with S Pen, the pinnacle of the Android drawing experience. Really? They're Korean? The pinnacle of the Android drawing experience. Kaka! There are a lot of Android tablets out there. You can find them literally everywhere, but finding a good one to draw on, that's a little tougher. And over the last few months, I have been compiling a list of Android tablets that are good for drawing and sketching, but it is a short list. What I'm really looking for is a tablet that can compete with the iPad Pros with the same level of quality. Last fall, I came up with the Galaxy Tab A, and I did a review of it, and I liked it, but I felt that it was a pretty big step down in terms of the quality quality of the screen and some of the other elements of the tablet. It just felt like a stripped down, cheaper version of an iPad Pro. The S3 is like the Tab A on steroids. A better screen, a better processor, better sound, and better battery life. For me, it all comes down to the screen. It is so much crisper. Having all of those pixels packed into that screen, drawing was just so much better. So many times on the Tab A, things just look blurry, especially if I zoomed in a little bit or and I wasn't set specifically at 100% in most drawing apps. On this tablet, that was not a problem at all. My artwork always looked great. The screen is a QXGA SAMOLED screen. What does that mean? What does that mean? The display uses a pentile matrix subpixel design. That means that the green subpixel is shared by two pixels and the display has only two subpixels per real pixel. I knew that. I totally knew that. Did you know that? I totally knew that. I totally knew that. One thing that I would recommend is that as soon as you get the tablet, I would go into the settings. There is a little setting in there called auto brightness. What's happening is somewhere on the surface of the tablet, I never figured out exactly where, there is a sensor that's trying to pick up how much light is in the room. Based on how much light is in the room, it is either dimming the screen or brightening the screen to make it better for reading. However, this is terrible for drawing because if your hand while drawing goes over the sensor, your screen goes light, dark, light, dark all the time. So I would totally recommend looking into turning that off right away because it, it really will bug you. So how is the pen? How does it work? How does it hold up to the Apple Pencil? Well, overall, really well. The S Pen is using Wacom technology and they have been refining it for quite a while and it really shows it is a great pen to draw with. You have over 4,000 levels of pressure sensitivity in this pen but I think the palm rejection could use a tiny bit of work. It's close and it's pretty good but it could use some work. In apps like Sketchbook, I would occasionally select a layer with my palm or to accidentally hit one of those two little buttons along the side which would throw me out of the app. So I had to make sure that the tablet was positioned in such a way that my hand would never hit those buttons. Now this palm rejection may have just had something to do with the apps I was using at the time. When I was using Medibang, I didn't seem to have any of these problems at all. Even though Autodesk Sketchbook has a pen mode and I had that pen mode turned on, I still found myself accidentally selecting things. There is no jitter on slow strokes that you find in some pens and the pressure sensitivity range is gonna vary from app to app based on how those apps are calibrated, but overall I found it to be pretty darn good. And the pen doesn't require any battery, so you're never gonna have to awkwardly shove it into the bottom of your tablet to recharge it. But pen input lag was was noticeable on the tablet. I think it's actually more noticeable in some of the sample videos I'm showing than it is in person when you're drawing. Across the board, I saw that the pen line was lagging slightly behind the tip. When I first got the tablet, I started drawing just the way I would normally draw. After I drew and put some of my thoughts down on paper, then I ran it through some of the tests that I would run through anything, checking for line jitters and that sort of thing. And that's when I started to notice it. I didn't really notice it so much when I was actually drawing, only testing the pen. So yes, the lag is there. Uh, if you look for it, you can find it. I don't think most people are gonna notice it and I think the level of lag that is there is acceptable. I've been told that the pen also has tilt functionality. Now, most of the apps that I use don't take advantage of that tilt functionality that it comes with. One of the apps that did was the uh, Samsung Notes app. So I did take a look at it there. Overall, it, it kind of works. Part of the problem is that the design of the pen is not conductive for actually tilting. So the tip of this pen is actually super small, one of the smallest tipped styluses I have ever used. The body of the pen then flares out rather quickly on the pen, so what happens with the pen is that it pivots off the screen when you tilt it down a little bit too much. Now this doesn't happen with the Apple Pencil or most Wacom styluses because these styluses taper smoothly to a point. I'm just pointing this out. For me personally, this did not detract from the pen or the drawing experience in any way. 
uh, overall, I think this pen is a huge upgrade over what came before. I think the technology inside the pen is identical, but the pen itself, this was the pen that came with the Tab A. This is also about the size of the pens that come with the Galaxy Notes. These are nice because they actually tuck into the device themselves. You can slide them in. Great for transporting and carrying around with you. Terrible for drawing. Uh, your hand, if you use this for more than like five or 10 minutes, at least for my hands, they really cramp. It is hard to kind of grip this for long periods of time. So going to this larger, more standard size pen stylus thing is a huge upgrade for drawing and illustration. If you do get the keyboard case, there is a loop that actually holds the pen. Uh, I did not get the keyboard case because um, it's $130 and as we've established in previous videos, I'm cheap. I do like the feel of this pen on the screen. The pen tip itself is a little bit rubbery. Uh, oftentimes with many styluses, especially when you have a very smooth glass screen, it almost feels like ice skating. The stylus moves a little too freely. It's a little too hard to control your lines. And so the slightly rubbery tip, textured tip is, is really nice. It does come with replaceable nibs. I tried some of them out. The lighter gray ones were a little bit harder and that did to me feel like ice skating on the screen. So I didn't care for those. I like the darker gray ones that it comes with. Now on my iPad Pro, I have a matte screen protector. It's a very thin screen protector, but it adds some texture. And what I like about it is, is because the Apple Pencil has a larger area that that pencil tip is actually hitting that surface with, having a little bit of grip to it is really nice. It doesn't feel exactly like paper, but it gives you enough resistance to make it easier to control the Apple Pencil. Now, since I have that screen protector on my iPad Pro, I did try the stylus out on it, and because the pen tip is so small, I didn't really notice that texture. The, the surface area of the pen actually coming in contact with that just didn't really, I, I couldn't really feel the grip. I just wanted to test it out and see if it was worth trying out using a matte screen protector on the S3 as well. I don't know if it really is since there is enough grip on the pen as there is and I didn't really notice the texture that much. Now I didn't get anything that would help me prop this thing up while I was using it. I did kind of miss that. I took a look at some of the accessories and Samsung accessories are so much cheaper than Apple accessories. For 13, 14 bucks, you could get a screen cover that's almost identical to the screen cover that I've seen on the iPads, which will give you a little bit of a draw angle with it as well. All right, let's get down to it. At the end of the day, I've been talking about the iPad and the Android. Which one is better? Um, I, overall, I'm going to say the iPad still has the edge. The main reason that the iPad has the edge is software. There's nothing on it like Procreate. Actually, there's a lot of apps like Procreate, but nothing as good. Procreate is probably my favorite drawing app on any platform. I also use an app called AstroPad quite a bit, which turns your iPad into kind of like a Cintiq-like drawing tablet. There is nothing like that on Android. I did a video a couple weeks back looking for something like that. Nothing even came close. There's not to say that there aren't some pretty good drawing apps available for Android if you're looking for some inexpensive options. I did a video on that a couple months ago as well, kind of going through my favorite drawing apps. However, I just don't think they're up to the level of quality you're gonna find on the iPad. And when it comes down to the price, the S3 is $600, an iPad Pro is $600. The one caveat to that is if you get an iPad Pro, you are going to really want an Apple Pencil. That's another $100. So realistically, what we're talking about here is that this tablet is $100 less than an iPad Pro. Also, I wouldn't be surprised if in the coming months, probably by this fall, the holiday season, that this is going to be cheaper, maybe $100 cheaper. You might even find some sales that drive it down even cheaper. That changes the equation a little bit. If you're talking about a tablet that's $200 less, okay, maybe then this is what you should go for. So that is the review. Those are my thoughts on the Galaxy Tab S3. Overall, fantastic product. You're not going to go wrong with it if you love Android tablets and you want to draw. This is the top of the line. And also, I would like to thank all my Patreons. Uh, their support really helps me do this on a weekly basis. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below or you can always hit me up on Twitter. That's all I've got. I'll see you guys next week.